Hallelujah. Amen. Are we ready to praise the Lord this morning? Yes. Are we ready to lift his name on high? Yes. Amen. 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 We're trading our sorrows this morning to praise his name. I want to see you clap your hands in your room. Wherever you are, you want to lift your hands up to Jesus. Amen. I'm trading my sorrows and I'm trading my shame and I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord. I'm trading my sickness and I'm trading my pain and I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord. And I'm trading my sorrow. Oh, 
Chapter 5. Now let me sing to my well-beloved a song of my beloved regarding his vineyard. My well-beloved has a vineyard on a very fruitful hill. He dug it up and cleared out its stones, and planted it with the choicest vine. He built a tower in its midst, and also made a wine-press in it. So he expected it to bring forth good grapes, but it brought forth wild grapes. And now... O inhabitants of Jerusalem and men of Judah, judge, please, between me and my vineyard. What more could have been done to my vineyard than I have not done in it? Why then, when I expected it to bring forth good grapes, did it bring forth wild grapes? And now, please let me tell you what I will do to my vineyard. I will take away its hedge, and it shall be burned, and break down its wall, and it shall be trampled down. I will lay it waste. It shall not be pruned or dug, but there shall come up briars and thorns. I will also command the clouds that they rain no rain on it. For the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel, and the men of Judah are his pleasant plant. He looked for justice, but behold, oppression, for righteousness, but behold, a cry for help. Though I also might have confidence in the flesh, if anyone else thinks he may have confidence in the flesh, I more so. Circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of the Hebrews, concerning the law, a Pharisee, concerning zeal, persecuting the church, concerning the righteousness which is in the law, blameless. But what things were gained to me, these I have counted loss for Christ. Yet indeed I also count all things lost for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and count them as rubbish, that I may gain Christ and be found in Him, not having my own righteousness, which is from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which is from God by faith, that I may know Him and the power of His resurrection and the fellowship of His sufferings, being conformed to his death, if by any means I may attain to the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already attained or am already perfected, but I press on, that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, Forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead, I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Hear another parable. There was a certain landowner who planted a vineyard and set a hedge around it, 
dug a wine press in it, and built a tower. And he leased it to vine dressers and went into a far country. Now, when vintage time drew near, he sent his servants to the vine dressers that they might receive its fruit. And the vine dressers took his servants, beat one, killed one, and stoned another. Again, he sent other servants, more than the first, and they did likewise to them. Then, last of all, he sent his son to them, saying, They will respect my son. But when the vine dressers saw the son, they said among themselves, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him and seize his inheritance. So they took him and cast him out of the vineyard and killed him. Therefore, when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to those vine dressers? He will destroy those wicked men miserably and lease his vineyard to other vine dressers who will render to him the fruits in their seasons. Have you never read in the scriptures, the stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone? This was the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. Therefore I say to you, the kingdom of God will be taken from you and given to a nation bearing the fruits of it. And whoever falls on this stone will be broken, but on whomever it falls, it will grind him to powder. Now when the chief priests and Pharisees heard his parables, they perceived that he was speaking of them. But when they sought to lay hands on him, they feared the multitudes, because they took him for a prophet. Good morning and happy Sunday. Today, we are speaking about a topic that is very important and I believe is dear to the Father's heart. It's titled Producing Fruits, or you can also say Bearing Fruits. They are one and the same. I want a key verse to be read and we'll move from there. So it's John 15, verse 5 to 6. So John 15, verse 5 to 6. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever lives in me, and I in him, bears much abundant fruit. However, apart from me, or cut off from vital union with me, you can do nothing. So let's go, let's jump to verse 16. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. Then the Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. I mean, Jesus is really amazing. He gives the perfect analogy, the perfect picture of what it means to bear fruit, a tree, or in this case, a vine. And he talks about the fact that as he is the vine, we are the branches. And of course, it's branches that bear fruit. Now, if we are not connected to the vine, we cannot bear fruit. Now, this is simple. It has to do with a source, and it has to do with nutrition. Without being connected to a source, we have no power. Another example that can be given is, let's say you have a video game console, Xbox, PS5, hopefully coming out soon. And it's a beautiful game. There are lots of graphics, the latest gen graphics. And there's no connection. There's no power. It's there, a wonderful thing. There's so much in it. There's, there's an amazing, there are so many amazing things it can do. But there's no power. So it's just there. But it can do nothing. And that's the imagery Christ is giving us. He's showing us that we need to be connected. We need to stay connected to him. Because without our connection to him, we can do nothing and we are basically useless. So I ask you, and you might ask yourself, so... What does it mean to bear fruit? How do I bear fruit? 
So we'll answer these questions. And I mean, the initial things we've said so far in the verses and why we should bear fruit have at least thrown some light on it. So we all have a purpose. And in the end, the purpose is to bear fruit. Once we are kingdom people, we are Christians, we are in Christendom, we need to bear fruit. So you might ask me, what does it mean to bear fruit? How do I bear fruit? Now, the Bible says that you are the salt on this earth, and you are the light of the world. What does salt do? Salt preserves. If we are to go somewhere and your friends are speaking in a manner, or my friends are speaking in a manner that is coarse, what the Bible calls as coarse jokes or coarse talks, your preservation is immediately you get there, you season the conversation. People can't stay the same when they are around you. The Bible says we are the light of the world. Light illuminates. Because of your connection to the light of the world, which and who is Christ, you have, we have different friends. We have people going through so many things in life. Even now, in this time that there was a lockdown, people get depressed, people get sad. There are so many trials and tribulations. But you going back and being, having your source from the light, which is Christ, that internal light shines and it attracts people to you. And you have a word in season for them. You have an encouragement for, because you yourself have light in you. For the Bible says the light shineth in the darkness and the darkness does not comprehend. For light itself dispels darkness. These are the fruits we are talking about. The Bible talks about the fact that we are letters of Christ. We are living epistles. You and I, we are Christ on earth now. So as he is, so are we now, here and now. What you see Christ doing in the Bible, how he preached to people, how he spoke to people, he healed people, just his presence, the way he spoke, it caused change in people's lives. Those are the fruits. The fruits manifest in us. And as it manifests in us and we begin to live life and bear those fruits of, the Bible calls something the fruit of the Spirit, things like love, patience, kindness, long-suffering. It attracts people to us. People come our way. People want to experience this thing that they are seeing in us. And of course, because we are connected, we show them. For, for then we become a way post to Christ. We show them that, no, it's not through our own power. I'm just a loving person. I'm just a patient person. I just do these things. No, but it's because I'm connected. I have a source. I have a power source. And that source is Christ. Let me read another verse. And that's Colossians 1.10. Colossians 1.10, walk in a manner worthy of the Lord, to please him in all respects, bearing fruit in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God. We've spoken about bearing of fruits. You can ask another question. Look, I honestly want to know how to bear fruits. I understand what fruits are, what the, the, the fruits we are talking about, the fruits of the Spirit. I know why I have to. I know the effect it will have on me and my family. So how do I do it? It's by staying connected. And how do we stay connected? The Bible talks in Colossians 1, the 10 verse, the ending of it says, an increasing in the knowledge of God. That is how we'll do this. Because it is by being by his side, always going to him in prayer. That's the only way we get to know God. And it is through the knowledge of God that our faith increases. It's through the knowledge of God that we begin to understand what the world is about and what his perfect plan for us and the world is. It's through prayer, having communion with him in prayer, through our quiet time, through our studying of the word of God, through times such as this, listening to sermons, it might seem mundane. It might seem like, oh, that's what I'm always told. The, the song that says, read your Bible, pray every day, it might seem simple. 
but such nuggets of wisdom and things that will change our lives. I know for a fact that God is desirous of us to be connected to him. For that's why he came and died for us. He wants that connection with us. And it's through that connection we will bear fruits. It's through prayer, constant reading of the word. Then we bear fruit, we become ambassadors. We manifest as Christ in the world now. So we need to stay connected. We need to stay in the word. We need to listen to sermons, tapes, videos. There are a lot of information on YouTube. We need to be the light. We need to be the soul to preserve the world. So I put it to you and I put it to me. May we bear fruits, fruits that last, fruits that will change our lives and that of our families and that of our friends around us and the world at large. May we produce lasting fruits. May we produce fruits that the Father will be happy about. And may we, most of all, grow in the knowledge of God and stay connected to him. God bless you, and I know we will bear fruits and give all glory to God the Father. In Jesus' name, God bless you. Amen. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Welcome to the Accra Red Church. We aspire to be a strong united church, impacting families. Communities. Bow down and worship him. This is the hour. Workplaces. and nations for Christ.
sacrifice. One more time, one more time. And we offer set. trust. May he cause you not to fear by day or by night, by morn or by noon. May he lift you up. May he walk with you. May he lift the light of his countenance upon you and give you his peace, both now and always. Amen.